How many of us take the Quran only in the Torah's hand? This is a rhetorical question. How many of us just get to know the Quran in the Quran? You know, you get it off the shelf and you start dusting it off. <coughs> you just get it in. So let me give you the first trick. Okay? I want to finish the month of Ramadan. I'm going to finish the Quran with it. I'm going to do some math. The easiest way to finish the Quran in the month of Ramadan is to do some math. Okay. How many just how many parts in the Quran? 30. Very good. How many pages in every just every part? 20. How many prayers a day? Five. Do I have 20 into five you get? Four. Four. That means if you read two pages before every salah and two pages after every salah, you'll finish the Quran. It's the easiest way to do it. Isn't that amazing? Okay. We can make it a habit. You know why? Because the school of Ramadan will teach you. But after you finish school, you'll be tested to you. And you will get an exam. So when you graduate from the school of Ramadan, some of you will be very happy. Because you passed the test, some of you will be very sad. You missed out on the golden opportunity. So when you get your report card, well, I will say, Isn't that amazing? You get your book with the right hand side and you hear these beautiful words. Eternal pleasure. Or, I dropped the ball in the month of Ramadan, man. I slipped through, didn't do a thing. And you'll say, Ya laytani lam umuta kitabiya wa lam adri ma hisabiya ya laytaha kanat al-qadiya ما أغنى عني ماليا هات عني سلطانيا We're not going to go the other side. Just got the bottom, inshallah. Two things we fight for and waste our life for. Your wealth and the power. And that's what is going on in the world right now. They're just fighting over two things. Allah already told me that's not going to help you. Isn't that amazing? So four things are written in the womb. Who can tell me what they are? 120 days in the womb of your mother, two angels will come and give you four things guaranteed for you. Anybody knows what they are? Okay. It is your home, your lifespan, your risk, your sustenance and provisions, and your amal, your actions and deeds. Shaqiyun am sa'id. Happy or sad, meaning close to the mercy of Allah, away from the mercy of Allah because of your actions and deeds. These four things you will be held accountable for on judgment days. Look at that. Your amulhi. Awalam no amirkum. I will not give you life. And those who actually reminded and ja'akum nadi, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu the warner, or even the gray hair that you have. The things you can't see without the glasses now. The noise you make when you get up and the noise you make when you sit down. Isn't that a hadith? See? So the Umar Allah says, Fi Umar Yafi Ma Yeah? So even though the star says that Umar and Shabab is, is part of it, but why does Allah ask you about your lifespan? Then He asks you about your youth, full years. He says, What did you do with your Umar? I've given you life. What did you do with it? What have given you youth and strength and health? What have you done? Because people will tell you that nations will rise or fall because of their youth. Allah will hold you accountable for your youth because that's the most important part of your life. Make it a break. Then he says, I've given you wealth. Where did you get it from? How did you spend it? Yes? And knowledge, what have you done with it? And so on and so forth. A lot at stake here. I have to make sure that my schedule from morning till evening is preoccupied with everything that will benefit me in hereafter.
So there is no movies or songs or anything like that that should be happening in the month of Ramadan. This month should only be not for news, not for anything else, not for newspaper, nothing. Every this month is for me and for Allah. Right? I need to submit myself to Allah. This month is for self-care. This will heal me. I need this month to heal me. <coughs> this month will repair me. And I need to allow for my body to be able to do that. Do not be, you know, that person that puts your body under stress and does not give it any relief. This month is that month that will give you relief. It will detoxify you. It will take off all the negative energy. You just have to let yourself do it. The body will take care of itself. Allah designed it this way. You just have to make sure that you go and enter into month of Ramadan with high energy. You are at Dahlia Diamond Jewelry in Siri, BC. Uh, our telephone number is 778-888-3392 and our address 10198-152 Street, Siri, BC. Unit 217. Is me you know, if your employer tells you, hey, you're going to get paid triple time if you do the next five hours extra. And you go, okay, it's a no brainer. We cancel all everything that I have to do, all my commitments. And I want to do triple. Triple pay, huh? Why not? Only five hours. Then I get to go home. I can take the next day off. And you want to do more. This is what Allah is telling us the month of Ramadan is there. Just do it and you'll get it. Do more and you'll get more. It will be multifold. So the month of Ramadan should be for us that okay, because there's a lot at stake here, I have to make sure that my schedule from morning till evening is preoccupied with everything that will benefit me in hereafter. So there is no movies or songs or anything like that that should be happening in the month of Ramadan. This month should only be not for news, not for anything else, not for newspaper, nothing. Every This month is for me and for Allah, right? I need to submit myself to Allah. This month is for self-care. This will heal me. I need this month to heal me. <coughs> this month will repair me. And I need to allow for my body to be able to do that. Do not be, you know, that person that puts your body under stress and does not give it any relief. This month is that month that will give you relief. It will detoxify you. It will take off all the negative energy. You just have to let yourself do it. The body will take care of itself. Allah designed it this way. You just have to make sure that you go and enter into month of Ramadan with high energy. You start with a high note. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned the month of Ramadan. The person who's fasting, he has two glad times. And one of them is that at the time of uh, when they're breaking a fast, any dua that the person makes gets accepted. Any dua that you make gets accepted. So this month offers us a lot. We just have to make sure we take full from it. We need to have a schedule, but we can't go with this mindset. Oh my God, gotta fast again. I'm gonna be hungry. I have to talk to people. I have to cover my mouth because of the smell, you know, bad smell in my mouth, so on and so forth. This smell, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi told us, "La khalufu fa misa'in." Actually, I'm in the law. That this smell that emits, this foul smell that we call it, it comes out of our mouth. This is more blood in the court of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala than anything else. Allah knows our struggle. No one understands it, but Allah does. No one feels that Allah can sense it from us. That my slave is making this sacrifice for me. Nothing goes unnoticed in the court of Allah. Nothing. Even that, you know, when you feel a little bit of tiredness and fatigue, oh, I'm tired. 
And you're like, and you moved on. Or your mind or your body felt so tired, you moved on. You didn't say anything. Even that gets documented in the court of Allah because you're doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake. So this month of Ramadan has to be very different. It has to be different comparatively to all the other Ramadans that we had previously. This has to be a better Ramadan. This has to be one of the best Ramadan in our entire life. Are we ready for that? Inshallah. Hey, your inshallah was stronger than the first two months. When you make wudu, you know the water is in your hands, and you literally put it in your mouth. What makes you not slip it through? Spit it back out. Anybody watching you? No? Exactly. Any sensors in your throat? That if it feels water, it will go on your social media and flag you out. This brother is a hypocrite, man. <laughs> Does it do that? Of course not. What makes you hold back? This is exactly right. And that's the key word in the month of Allah. You know when I talk about the ibadah and the akhlaq that are coupled in that in the Quran, Allah usually couples the ibadah with the akhlaq in the Quran. Right? But what is the akhlaq, what is the character and the demeanor and the behavior that Allah couples with the month of Allah? Who knows that? Shaykh is not allowed to. Shaykh Ahmad is not allowed to. Mashallah, beautiful voice. Say Mashallah. Mashallah. Don't take it for granted. Learn from the man. Mashallah. It's taqwa. You learn taqwa in the month of Ramadan. Yes? Okay. So, how do you do that? One of them was just mentioned. The other is so if you don't eat anything and drink anything outside, and then you come home and you close all the doors. And if the only door you open is the door of the fridge, do you learn that one? No. That's why it's a secret between you and Allah. So here's the deal. You leave your food for the sake of Allah, Allah will feed you from the food of Jannah. You leave your fluid, the water for the sake of Allah, Allah will quench your thirst from how to talk. Not only that, rivers of water. Rivers of milk, rivers of honey, rivers of non toxicating wine. Ajib. You leave your shahwa, your whims and desires, your intimate relations with your spouse during the day, Allah gives you the whole name. And, and the sisters are, are, you know, we're good? We're good? I don't do politics, so I just want to make sure that, you know, nothing is strong. We're good with that, alhamdulillah. And you close all the doors for the sake of Allah. Allah opens the door of a riyadh for you. Isn't that amazing? That's what the journey is about. You see, this plane is the month of Allah. Your captain is the Quran. Your destination is Allah. But you have to do what? Again, your senses have to be checked. That's your seatbelt. And your fuel is that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Zad, what is the Zad? But as a wudu fa inna khayr Zad, attaqwa wa attaqooni yawmi al maq. A Zad ma yahtajur al musaf. On a journey, it's called Zad. You will need to sustain yourself. And Allah says the best Zad is taqwa. And that's why this journey of the month of Ramadan is a school that you will learn more about yourself than anything else. You will truly learn your true colors. You see, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you this opportunity in the month of Ramadan, He's given you a golden key. This key opens a huge treasure of life. Look, let's be honest. How many of us take the Quran only in the Don't raise your hand. This is a rhetorical question. How many of us just get to know the Quran in the month of Ramadan? You know, you get it off the shelf and you start dusting it off. <coughs> you can just get it in. So let me give you the first trick. Okay? I want to finish the month of Ramadan. I'm going to finish the Quran with it. I'm going to do some math. The easiest way to finish the Quran in the month of Ramadan is to do some math. Okay. How many juice, How many parts in the Quran? 30. Very good. How many pages in every juice, every bottle? 20. How many prayers a day? 
5. Do I have 20 into 5 you get? 4. 4. That means if you read 2 pages before every salah and 2 pages after every salah, you'll finish the prayer. It's the easiest way to do it. Isn't that amazing? Okay. We can make it a habit. You know why? Because the school of Ramadan will teach you. But after you finish school, you'll be tested to you. And you will get an exam. So when you graduate from the school of Ramadan, some of you will be very happy because you passed the test. Some of you will be very sad. You missed out on the golden opportunity. So when you get your report card, well, I will say, Isn't that amazing? You get your book on the right hand side and you hear these beautiful words. Eternal pleasure. Or, I dropped the ball in the month of Ramadan, man. I slipped through, didn't do a thing. And you'll say, Ya laytani lam huta kitabiya wa lam adri ma hisabiya Ya laytaha kanat al qadiya ما أغنى عني ماليا هات عني سلطانيا Two things we fight for and waste our life for. Your wealth and the power. And that's what is going on in the world right now. They're just fighting over two things. Allah already told me that's not going to help you. Isn't that amazing? So four things are written in the womb. Who can tell me what they are? 120 days in the womb of your mother, two angels will come and give you four things guaranteed for you. Anybody knows what they are? Okay. It is your home, your lifespan, your risk, your sustenance and provisions, and your amal, your actions and deeds. Shaqiyun am sa'id. Happy or sad, meaning close to the mercy of Allah, away from the mercy of Allah because of your actions and deeds. These four things you will be held accountable for on judgment days. Look at that. Your umuli, awalam na'amilkum, have you not given your life? That those who actually reminded and ja'akum in nadi, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the warner, or even the gray hair that you have, the things you can't see without the glasses now. The noise you make when you get up and the noise you make when you sit down. Isn't that a hadith? So the Umar Allah says to you, Umar he fima abla. So he fima afna. Yeah? He says, even though the star says that Umar and Shabab is, is part of it, but why does Allah ask you about your lifespan? Then he asks you about your youth, full years. He says, what did you do with your Umar? I've given you life. What did you do with it? What have given you youth and strength and health? What have you done? Because people will tell you that nations will rise or fall because of their youth. Allah will hold you accountable for your youth because that's the most important part of your life. Make it a break. Then he says, I've given you wealth. Where did you get it from? How did you spend it? Yes? And knowledge, what have you done with it? And so on and so forth. So, the school of Ramadan, brothers and sisters, is the best school ever. I'm going to take a segue to combine the school of Ramadan and the purpose we're here. So, let me just mend them together and talk about the Nasajid. Why they are so special? Okay. What do we do in the Nasajid? Why are they so special in our lives? The prayer, very good. So the prayer, brothers and sisters, is the first thing you will be held accountable for on judgment day. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts your prayer, will accept everything. If doesn't accept your prayer, will not accept anything. So you see the only ibadah that you cannot make up for somebody else is prayer. Can somebody make up your fast? Yes. Can somebody make up your hajj? Yes. Can somebody make up your zakat? Yes. 
Yes? But the only ibadah, the only acts of worship, nobody can make it up for you, is your salah. Yes? Okay. You see, on judgment day, Abdi never have to solve me. Why didn't you pray? He said, yeah, you know, I was, I was so rich. <laughs> I, I've had people to see things to do, places to go. Are you, are you richer than Sulaiman, alayhi salam? It's not going to help you. You know, guess what? If you don't pray here in this dunya, we, guess where you're going to pray? Yeah, in a nasty place. Here comes another one. Ah. So I want you to get this subliminal messages. I want to, I want to come like a nightmare. When you guys go to sleep, I want you to hear me. Ah. You don't pray in this life, you're going to pray in someone else. All right. This first man heard that this man says, I'm rich, it didn't work. He said, I'm so poor. How poor are you, man? I'm so poor. Are you, are you poor than Isa alayhi salam? He used to say this, oh, this earth is my bed and the heaven is my cover. You're not poor than him. What happens now? All together? I'm losing my voice, sorry. <laughs> it's a high pitch. Now, I was so good looking. You know what? I can keep off me, Sheikh. No? Yeah, I was like God's gift to women. Yeah? Who the man? You the man? Yeah, sure, sure. Aren't the Amba and Yusuf Al-Islam? Are you more beautiful than Yusuf Al-Islam? Don't answer because can you give yourself a break, please. And you see yourself in the morning, yeah. you don't, don't <laughs> take it easy on yourself. Ya Allah, al Jabal, you're going to come to the Rasul, you're going to You're butting your head against the mountain. Take it easy on your head, not the mountain. Nobody's going to be more beautiful than Yusuf. You will be like Jannah, inshallah. But it's not going to help you. Yes? Same thing. Huh? Why? See, Allah makes it so easy for you, yes? He brings you back in the month of Ramadan, inshallah. See, Sheikh, I, uh, I, you know, I, uh, I'm traveling. Sure, okay. A little ba'idah, every four prayer, you make it two. You can combine. Um, uh, you should, no problem. Dry revolution. Uh, there's no much to don't worry. I don't know the qibla. I can't stand, sit. I can't sit. Lie down. I can't lie down. Move your head. Can't move my head. Move your eyes. Can't move my eyes. Think about it in your brain. I can't think about it. You're dead. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Any other excuse? Okay. So you get to come back. You see the spiritual aspect of the Quran. All right. What else? You recite Quran. You heard the shape. Mashallah. You see the Quran is the best of the best of the best of the best. Let me, let me take you through the journey. Who did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bila trust with the revelation as an angel to send with? Who is he? Jibreel alayhi salam. And who is he? He is the master. He's the leader. He's the boss of all angels. Best. And who did he reveal it on to? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He's the best of creation. Not just the seal of the prophets and messengers. Very good. And whose ummah was it revealed on? Muslims, Kuntum Khaya Ummah, the best of nations. What town was it revealed in? What city? Mecca, the best of cities. What month was it revealed in? Mount Ramadan. Sayyid al Shahur, the master of all months, is Ramadan. What night was it revealed in? The Qadr, the best of nights. Better than a thousand months. Not equal to a thousand. Khayyun min al It's not equal. That's mistranslation. Most people say it's equal to a thousand months. Incorrect. Allah says, خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ He didn't say equal to, to Sa'wi. No. He says, خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ Better than 83 years of ibad, one night, Sheikh. That's a gift. That's serious. So if you let the Qur'an touch your heart, and you become a walking Qur'an, you'll be the best. You see the connection, Sheikh? So, this masjid is so special that Prophet Muhammad said you just can't come in here. You have to say something before you come in. A specific dhikr on the dua before you come in the masjid. Yes? And when you leave, it's the same thing. Yeah, just leave. There's another dua and a dhikr you're supposed to say. Can you come in and just sit down? Yes or no? I'm not going to go there. No. With all due respect, I don't want to go there. I get it, I get it. I studied Fiqh Muqara, so I get it. <laughs> But under you know, you You can't sit down. You have to pray to the Rakaat salutation. Yes? That's just one time. Uh, with all due respect to all the, 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 the But you see, it's so special. 
And he says this heart is hung in the masjid. He didn't say with the masjid. No. Why is a masjid is that your heart is hung in the masjid? Who can tell me why? Rajul qalbu mu'alakum masajid. Among the seven that will be shared on Judgment Day. May Allah make us among them. Yes, Habibi, go ahead. You're absolutely right. I have no idea what you said, but you're good looking enough. You're not allowed to you. Because they're so special? Yeah. You're right. And you are. What's your name? Mubin. 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 Brother Mubin is so special. How old are you, Brother Mubin? Six. Six years old. Are you married yet? <laughs> not married yet? Let me talk to you about it, man. Come on, dude. For them, for the family, and the angels of judgment day. Make their grave a piece of heaven, not a piece of hell. Say I mean. Expand it as far as their eyesight can see. Say I mean. Amen. Furnish it from Jannah, not the hellfire. Say I mean. Amen. Feed them from the food of Jannah, not the hellfire. Amen. Open a gate in their grave to be able to see the place in Jannah. So they say, Rabbi, after the Sa'ah, I will do it and you will marry. Say I mean. Amen. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu has received the tribe called Bani Mudar. They were going through difficulties. And the Prophet Sallallahu you know, they was very angry. His face was red. Help your brothers. So they gave so much money, they couldn't get up. This is when said the Sunnah of the Islam. Allahu Akbar, 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 Allahu so if you start a righteous deed, you will get the reward for everyone that will follow you. It will not deprive you of anyone who will decrease any of that reward for those who precede you. Okay. That means we're going to start building up, inshallah, this much together. Okay? But those who are going to start it, they will get the reward for everyone that will follow them until judgment day. Welcome. You are at Dahlia Diamond Jewelry in Siri, D.C. Uh, our telephone number is 778-888-3392 and our address 10198-152 Street, Surrey, BC, Unit 217.